Hey guys, welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today, very exciting, I'm going to be talking a little bit, an introduction to textures and materials. This is a really deep topic, and I think something that you really need to understand is I could spend several hundred tutorials going over image, like the, the textures and tutorial, or I can't even speak, the materials and textures and how they use them and all the cool things you can do with them. But today it's just going to be an overview. And what I want to do, the goal of this lesson, is to make a simple wood texture. Now, first thing you want to do is make this kind of make this box into a plank of wood. So edit mode and select the top vertices. You guys should know how to do all this from the other tutorials. Grab it, z-axis, flatten it, pretty flat, and then scale it out. Oop. We want to select all of them and then scale it out with S key to make it big. Now again I want to make this a little more flat so it looks like a piece of wood. On the z-axis bring it down. Alright perfect. Now the next thing we need to do since the images and texture, or sorry not images, materials and textures, the textures really only show up in render mode. They only really show up well in render mode I should say. So we're going to be rendering a lot and we're going to need some really good lighting. So let's grab, actually we've got to go to object mode. We've got to grab this light here. And the lights are tricky to move around. You can select it, hit G to move it just like any object. Um, I like to stick it to an axis when I move it because otherwise it will go up and down and all around where you don't want it. So I'm going to throw this one over on the Y axis and then I'm going to come over to the properties tab click on the one that looks like a little light. These are the lamp settings. And I'm going to turn the energy down a little bit. This one's just going to give us a little... This one's just going to help get rid of shadows, basically. And I want another one make it symmetric on the other side. So I hold down Shift and press D to duplicate, and that auto put, automatically puts me in grab mode with the duplicate. So I'm going to lock it to the y-axis, bring it over, hit grab, and lock it to the x-axis, and move it about symmetric on the other side. Not quite, but that's okay. Now, the other thing I want to do is I want to add a new light, and I'm going to add it around about where the camera is. Oh, wow, that's really not symmetric. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move this a little more up here. And then 3D cursor up behind or near the the camera and we're gonna get hold down shift and press A this is the add menu come down to lamp let's do a hemisphere hemispheres are weird because they have a point where they actually point the light towards so you have to not only put them where you want them but point them where you want them luckily for us it's pretty close to where we want it so hold down R or just press R to rotate and again I like to lock this to an axis once I get it about right. So R, Z, lock it to the Z axis to rotate. And now we have a good bright light pointing on there. Let's move this back just a little bit. Right there. Perfect. Now we'll just make sure that we can hit F12 or come up to render and render image. Same thing. Just make sure that it looks pretty good. It looks well lit. Now go into the camera. I'm just going to actually select the camera and that way I can play with some of the settings while I'm looking. I'm going to change the focal length so it kind of zooms out a little bit and then I'm going to hold down shift, press F, hold down the middle mouse button and hold up to go up a little bit, let go and then just look down with the mouse movement click and then hold it hit zero to get out of that all right perfect so now we have our scene set up now we're going to turn this into a piece of wood first thing we need to do is learn the difference between textures and materials everything needs a material doesn't matter what you want to do with it you need to put a material on it so with the object you want selected you come up to this little circle I don't even know what that is, like the colors, the little circle symbol here. 
That's the material symbol. Click on it and you'll automatically have a material. Its name is right here, material. Let's name it wood material or wood mat for short. Um, once you change that, it just click off and it'll save the, the name. You can delete it with this X key. We're not going to do that though. And you can see there's a lot of options to play with. I really encourage you to play with these because it, there's just so many I can't go over all of them. One thing to note though, if you do click on something like say wire, wire only shows the vertices, which is cool, but why doesn't it show up over here? That's because you have to render it so that to make it show up. So if we hit F12 and render it, you'll see it does the wire. So if something you change doesn't really make a difference, render it and see if see if you can tell then. Um, so we want surface for this. Now the first thing you're going to see underneath this preview pane, which you can actually change the shape of, we're going to change it to a flat because that's closest to what we have. Um, is this diffuse? You have this diffuse, and this refers to diffuse lighting. This basically sets the color of the material. So you can see as we drag this around, it changes the color of that material. Since we're doing wood, I think the base color should be a kind of light khaki color. Um, something like this should be good. And we can always come back and change that later. And you can change the intensity. The Lambert just refers to a certain algorithm used to apply it. Lambert's fine. I don't know anything about the other ones. Um, specular. This is the reflected light. You can see this little glare on the preview. That is the specular light. So if we change it to red or pink, it's going to change that. Most of the time, almost always, you want white specular. So we're going to stick with white. Um, intensity and hardness also affect that. We're going to leave them at default. And then that's really all we're going to mess with in the material properties. So now we have our base material. We're good to go. And we want to apply some textures to make it look like wood. Think of the material as what it what is made out of, how it behaves with light. Think of textures kind of as wallpaper. That's not necessarily true. You can actually change a lot of cool things. But think of it more as a wallpaper, much more aesthetic and the material more how the light behaves. Um, so we're going to add a new texture. You'll see, you, sh you might see if you click on it, it just has a texture called text. All right, well, let's rename that. And we're going to call it um, grain one. And then just click off and you'll see it'll change to grain one. The type, this is important. There's a lot of different types. And you'll see if it has the checkerboard pattern, that means it's generated automatically. If it has the little image icon, that means it's something you load in. For example, you can load in a picture of yourself and put a big picture of yourself on that little pane. And it may or may not look pretty ugly. But we're going to make, we're going to use clouds. And I know you're thinking wood, but clouds aren't wood. There was a wood one in there, right? We'll get back to that later. I'm going to show you a trick that you can use with the clouds texture to make it look a lot like wood. So go to clouds and then you'll see the preview and you can change what the preview shows, preview material both. The material actually is what if we render it right now, you can, let's try it. If we render it, it looks pretty ugly. It looks bright magenta and they use the magenta as the default just to show contrast. Uh, we're going to change some properties though to make this really look good. We're going to skip down to Underneath clouds, the setting specific to this one, we're going to change the depth to 1, and the size, we're going to up it to, let's say, about 3.35. And then we're going to come down, and in the mapping, you can stretch it, and you can offset it, that kind of stuff. We're going to stretch it along the y-axis by a lot, and this will really give it that wood look. So change this to 10 and you can hit enter there. Now look how that looks in the in the preview. That looks a lot more like a wood grain. But it's still bright pink. So keep scrolling down and under this influence section, you'll see this bright pink color. Click on it and change it to some kind of khaki, a little bit darker maybe than what we did before. And this is honestly the hardest part is just finding this brown color on this color wheel. I'm going to 
If you can't find it, it helps to kind of go darker. So once you find that brown, which I'm terrible at, sorry, let's go with here. That'll work. Once you find that brown, come back up and look at material, make sure it works. And that's our first texture. So we can see up here, this is a list of all the textures we have. We have one, it's called grain one. And hit F12 to render it. And we could stop there. That looks decently like wood. Um, but we're not going to stop there. We're going to make it even more realistic. If you notice, it's too regular. I mean, you can still tell it looks fake. It looks pretty good, but it still looks fake. So what we're going to do is add another texture. Um, under this list of textures, click on one of these empty things. Hit New. And again, see it's bright, bright pink. Um, and we're going to add the wood this time. <clears throat> and there's something cool with the wood that we're going to do. I don't really know why it has these default just lines. It doesn't really look like wood to me. But if we come down to the wood section and change this to try and change it to ring noise, it looks a little bit more like a wood pattern. <clears throat> and then we're going to use these settings here to change the size to 0 0.3, 0 0.32. And then we're going to change the, oh, let me see here. We're going to change the turbulence to about 16. So you can click and drag, or you can click and enter the value. We're going to change it to about 16, and this gives us a much more detailed pattern. OK, so now we're going to change the mapping to kind of stretch it out again, x. Let's go about 0 0.3. And if you're wondering how I know all this, it's because I just followed a tutorial that does all of this. And I it it's basically trial and error to figure it out. So look at that. Now that looks a lot more like the rings and bands in, in a real piece of wood that you see in the preview. But it's still, again, bright pink. So what we're going to do is we're coming down to that color. And this time we want a deeper, darker brown. And... I think it's around here somewhere. That should be good. Now, this, let's, oh, I forgot to rename it. Let's rename it grain two to keep track of it. And then hit F12 to render it now. That looks pretty good. I think if you change the order of the how the material, the textures are applied, it really affects the end result. So I'm going to try that and apply grain one and then grain two. And that looks a little better. I think it might be too dark. Let's try and just lighten that up a little. Okay. So let's go with that. That looks good enough. Let's now, you can still see the one problem is it looks way too smooth. Real wood isn't that smooth. It has little nicks in it, it has splinters, that kind of thing. So the next thing you want to do is add a third texture by clicking again on an empty one, pressing new, and it's going to be clouds, which mine just happened to default to. So change the type to clouds, and this time we're going to do a little bit different settings. We're going to change the noise type to hard, and we're going to change the size down a little to 0.16 to make them more like specs and we're going to change the depth to 4 to make them harder like scratches. Now we're going to come down to the mapping again just like we did on the other one and we need to stretch it out to make it you know have the grain in it. So we're going to change the Y to 40. That's a lot. It's just going to stretch it out and make it look more like wood. And then we need to change color to brown and again this is a good place to play around and get used to it um, to get used to what this does just by changing the color you can change a lot about this okay so we'll go for a kind of pale chocolate brown there and <clears throat> if we rendered it now it adds a little bit of complexity to the texture but it's still super smooth so one trick is what's called the normal 
in the geometry under influence, normal will actually affect the height. It'll affect the, the without actually changing the mesh itself, it'll change how it affect like the light goes in and out of it. It'll change the surface um, to have more depth and pattern. And this one will just give us nicks and scratches kind of thing. Um, and also, uh, we're going to turn this way down to about 0 0.05. And then we're going to turn on warp, which kind of gives an element of randomness. I don't totally understand it, to be honest with you. But we're going to turn it up to about 0.3. And now, let's render it, see how it looks. And that looks pretty good. You can actually see in the light, when you see like a glare, you can see where the grain splinters and you have edges and ridges in there. So that's a pretty good looking wood texture. And you can play with the colors. You can play with any of these. Um, let's rename this one to Grain 3. And I encourage you to do so. Um, you can play with the, the shininess of the material by changing the intensity. You can go to the Textures tab. You can rearrange any of these three and play with the different effects that they give. That one gives, oh yeah, putting grain 3 last really makes a difference. That's how you want it. And you can actually see in the preview here the, the textures and the ridges. So I encourage you to play with all of that. There's a lot more to materials and textures, and maybe I'll intersperse it between tutorials, just kind of as we go. But that's a really good primer. And so next time, I will jump into a whole new tutorial. We'll start something again with modeling and, and learn some more tricks to modeling. So thanks for staying, and I'll see you guys next week.